Are you dealing with narcissistic abuse? Maybe you've been with a person that's incredibly toxic. Maybe you've been with someone who has beaten you down, who has hurt you, who has put you to a place where you no longer know who you are, you no longer have self-esteem, you no longer have confidence, you no longer have self-worth, and you're not sure what to do. Well, today we're going to talk about the importance of self-care in that healing from narcissistic abuse, and I want to dive into seven different aspects of self-care. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge. You can access at claritychallenge.net. If you like what you see here, please subscribe, hit that notification so you can learn more about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, my journey in narcissism, trying to break it down for people just to be able to understand what narcissism actually is and how it impacts people in such a negative way. When we're talking about narcissistic abuse, and we need to talk about the aspect of self-care, of like how do we actually work through this? Because it's hard to know how to be able to have self-care at all once you've gotten away from a toxic relationship, once you've gotten away from a toxic person. So I want to talk to you today about seven different aspects of self of self care uh, with un, and with unlimited applications. Like it's not like it's just this one area. You can apply this to a lot of different things, and then be able to walk you through a couple aspects of the five stages of your healing journey, and to try to be able to partner with you however we can in that process. Okay. So really quick, when we're talking about narcissistic abuse, when you're in a narcissistic relationship, you don't have an opportunity for self care. Like it just it doesn't exist. Like self care for you is like having to like hide that self care because it's typically going to take away from the narcissist. So like for me, like I would never have a, a moment or an idea or a thought of like giving my wife time for self care because it was all about me. Like my needs mattered more than her needs. My needs mattered more than anybody else. Okay, because and that's what happens in a narcissist relationship. Like you show up for that person, and if you start to try to do self care for you, like you're shamed for it. Like that's ridiculous. Can't believe you do that. How selfish. All those things. So like getting out, it's like how do I actually take care of myself? Like how do I actually take care of me? Of doing like self care. Okay, because in the relationship, you're typically controlled. You're contained and you're only sought out for compliance of like, this has to be something that you have to do, okay? Emotions, self-care, family, friends, doesn't matter to a narcissist. They don't care, okay? All they care about in that moment is them, themselves, but not you, okay? So when we're talking about self-care, we're talking about like how, let's, let's dive into some aspects of like coping, healing, like tools and strategies to actually be able to heal and to be able to help you move forward, to be able to help you deal with whether it's anxiety, like depression, like lack of worth, like self-confidence issues, all these different things. We need to be able to bring it together and say, hey, this is how we actually work through it. So we're diving into seven self-care uh, topics, things that you can use to be able to put into your life to be able to help out, okay? Number one is exercise. Okay, simple, I know, and it doesn't seem like, wait, this doesn't really match up to like emotional, like, like rebuilding, like it does, because exercise helps reduce stress, like it helps actually start to get your body into a healthy rhythm of this is what's going on. Like it works a lot of times in your mind or in your, your mind's eye of like, okay, this is developing a healthy body image. What it also does is it slowly helps to build you confidence of like, this is something I can do. A lot of times people do not have confidence because they're not doing the same thing over and over and over. Not that you have to get bored with it, but we do have to get to a place where you can repeat something and say, hey, I actually accomplished that. This is something that I actually did. This is something that was actually successful in this area. When we see this happen over and over, people start to build and to grow in their confidence level to be able to continue moving forward. One great way to do that is starting to exercise, putting in an exercise plan. Even if it's something small, it doesn't matter. Those tiny little steps will compound over time as long as you keep doing them. The second thing that I wanted to bring up is mindfulness. Now, mindfulness, we're talking about a, a way of life, but we're talking about a way of thinking to actually have your focus come back to the present. Sometimes this is hard for people who have been in a narcissistic relationship because we focus so much on the past. Like you focus on like, wait a second, this happened to me, this happened to me, this wasn't fair, and totally get that, it's all true. But right now, as you're trying to work on self-care, it's like we need to switch it around and have that focus be on now. 
Have the focus be on how are you connecting with people around you? How are you growing? How are you engaging? How are you being present with the people that are here in your life now? This whole aspect is to work on reducing anxiety. A lot of times to reduce depression, to be able to bring the joy, to be able to bring the excitement of like, this is what's actually happening. This is one of the reasons why the, the second topic that we've been putting out with the journal that's coming out is called From Regret to Gratitude. Because a lot of people are getting out of like the, they're understanding the truth and they're getting out of the toxicity and then they're like, what do I do now? We're like, well, we need to focus and ground you, get mindful on the present, to bring in gratitude, to bring in joy, so you can continue moving forward. And the third self-care ex exercise, idea, thought process is journaling. And processing your thoughts and feelings. Like it is a great and a powerful way for you to find the truth. We have that journal out from fantasy to reality to try to help you find the truth, to have you ask the questions. We've had a couple people that have said like the journal has been really helpful and really influential in connection with their therapist or in connection with coaching because they're like, it's going through the same stuff that I'm struggling with in that moment. And that's part of the reason why we put that together is to be able to help you process the thoughts and the feelings and to get grounded, to have a foundation to be able to grow from. The fourth one is this aspect of compassion. Okay, so self-care of bringing in compassion into yourself. Like this is a, an active, thoughtful process of being kinder to yourself. Part of that is going back and remembering and seeing the abuse and then acknowledging that it wasn't your fault, that you're not responsible for the abuse that the other person put on you. Because the narcissist will typically tell you it was your fault. You made me do this, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to go back and you have to remember, wait a second, this is not my fault. This is not something that I caused this person to do to me. I did not cause them to cheat. I did not cause them to lie. I did not cause them to abuse. That was their decision. And sometimes you have to be really kind to yourself and give yourself grace in that moment. And that's starting to develop levels of compassion. Next one that we have is acceptance. Okay, accepting the self-love. There a lot of times there's a resistance. You know, when some people are starting to try to do like self-love practices, they're starting to work through different things, a lot of times there's a resistance. I'm not good enough, I shouldn't be allowed to do this, like this isn't what I need, like all this kind of stuff, and they start to like push back on it. Sometimes it can even be like a, a fake humility of like, oh, you know, like I don't want that. You know, but it's when it comes down to it, it's like, no, like you need to be able to understand, you need to be able to accept it. You need to be able to accept what happened. You need to be able to accept what's here in the present. You need to be able to accept the direction you want to go in the future. You need to be able to accept, like, hey, you can actually invest in yourself. It's needed. You have to. In order to heal, it's the only thing you can do. So you have to start investing in yourself. Uh, the next one we have, uh, number six, would be boundaries. Okay, self-care is boundaries. And part of this is to protect yourself from further abuse. Part of it is to limit you from going back to abuse. And part of it is just a healthy practice to start putting in your life for self-care so that you don't get sidelined by toxic people or by healthy people. Those boundaries apply to you, not to the situation. They apply to you, not to the type of person that you're dealing with. So you might have a toxic person that wants to get in your life and you're like, no. And you might have a healthy person that wants to get in your life and you're like, hey, I can't do that or I can't be involved in X, Y, and Z because it's going to distract me from my purpose. That is a boundary that is a healthy boundary because it is focused on you, your self-care, your growth, regardless if you're dealing with a toxic or a healthy person, you still want to stay on the right track and the right path. Okay. Uh, and then number seven is the aspect of knowing you. So what I'm talking about is like, know your needs, like be able to communicate your needs to other people, be able to communicate your needs to yourself, know who you are, know the direction that you're going, know it's in like the self introspection of like, I'm going to look at myself. I'm going to work through this like day by day. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to say is I want to talk to you really quick about the five stages of healing. So we talked about this in the NARC app uh, just recently in one of our live uh, weekly connects that we do where we're interacting with different survivors and walking through things every single week, okay, um, every Monday night. So anyways, the five stages, I talk about every, every almost every single video, a lot of videos, I'll mention it, uh, but I haven't really do dove into it to be able to say this is what it is. So it breaks down to awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. Okay, so awareness is the videos, the journals, all the stuff that we're putting out there to try to have people just understand, hey, this is what it is. The growth piece is about community. That's like you building a support system and a structure, and that's from the creation of the NARC app. 
The NARCAP stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It is a community-based uh, app and program so that you can interact with other survivors across the world. You can log in on Monday nights to be able to interact with them, to be able to learn, to be able to grow, to be able to share goals and dreams and values, and to be able to build friendships that are going to help you move forward. The third thing, the third stage, is healing. And that's where we start down this road of escaping toxicity, like understanding the hard things that have actually gone in the relationship. That is actually a seven-day challenge to healing called Escape Toxicity, seven-day challenge to healing. You can access that at escapetoxicity.com. So we're super excited. That's a new program that just came out to try to be able to give you like an idea of what's coming in your growth and in your development leading into the fourth stage, which is change. And that's the 45-day clarity challenge. That you can partner with us 45 days, about 45 minutes a day to work on rewiring your mindset. This is a systematic process to break the trauma bond, to get rid of the rumination and to continue forward into the thriving category and community of where you wanna be in life. So that's access at claritychallenge.net. And then we have people stepping into, once they graduate from the 45-day the Clarity Challenge, they graduate into the Thriver Mastermind, which is helping people after they've broken the trauma and are moving forward into now what are they doing? How are they progressing in life with their goals? How are they building good, healthy relationships? How are they developing good either business or profits? How are they working on themselves spiritually, emotionally, physically? all different aspects and setting goals and moving forward on an extreme rate. So we're super excited about that. That one's actually under thrivermastermind.com. So we've got all those different pieces all over the place. The biggest thing that we're trying to focus on is being able to focus on you, like your development and being able to meet you with whatever stage of life that you're in right now to help you move forward in those small things, like the small, like developing confidence through the small repetition, of a day-to-day thing of a day-to-day basis as we build systematic processes to help you get free, to help you get free mentally and emotionally. Not just to leave physically and then still be stuck and still be trauma bonded, but we want you to get free 100% and move from victim to survivor to thriver and continue to grow, heal, and change and develop who you are.